And so welcome everyone who has tuned in. Uh, my name is Julie Busby. I'm the founder of Busby Group. We are a residential real estate team in Chicago. We do all things in, uh, in real estate in Chicago. And you might wonder why in the world is a real estate team hosting a resume writing class? Well, it is a passion of ours to help this lovely community that we just love. Uh, we started doing uh, unique webinars in the middle of shelter in place during COVID to give back to the community. And ever since then, we've always looked for other ways to further and grow our community. Um, we have been hearing of, of some tech layoffs, especially in Chicago, since we are a, a really good tech hub. And, um, you know, there's just seems to be a lot of people, I keep calling this the uh, the great reshuffle and people are moving around. So there's people looking for new career, new positions, or just a move. And that means they might have to look for something. Um, so we thought, goodness, let's meet, uh, you know, our community where they are and provide a, a resume writing class. So we're super excited to host this and give back to the community. We're excited to have our dear friend, Wilma Naxon with us today. She has been in resume writing for over 15 years, probably close to 20 years. She's a wonderful uh, career coach and resume writing um, coach with her company Life Working. So welcome, Wilma. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, it's great to be here. Should I just jump right in with the, with the program? Absolutely. I am, I will say quickly okay. to everyone, Wilma's going to jump in. Um, it's actually a short and sweet presentation for you all. And then at the end, we will do a Q&A. When you want to do a Q&A, you can do the private chat. We'll go to just um, one individual or you can do the chat so everyone can see. That's the public chat. So please feel free uh, to enter in your questions and we'll, we'll go over them at the end. So Wilma, uh, we're looking okay. forward to hearing your presentation. Perfect. And I'll put myself on mute so I'm not uh, interrupting in any way. Okay. Um, how will you make sure your resume will get you seen and noticed? Will yours rise to the top of the pile? Today, what we're going to discuss is how to stand out clearly by communicating your value at a glance. Strategies to position yourself competitive, competitively for human and digital eyes and the applicant tracking computer scan and techniques to increase your appeal to recruiters and hiring managers. So why do we have a picture of a goldfish? Um, according to, let's see. Yeah, according to the US National Library of Medicine, the average attention span of a human being has dropped 33% since the year 2000, from 12 seconds to eight seconds. So we better get their interest and grab their attention right away. And goldfish, have a longer attention span than people do. There's is nine seconds. So the key takeaway is the recruiter or hiring manager will glance at your resume for six to eight seconds before deciding to put it in the yes pile or the no pile. We want to write tight, succinct, and engaging. There's a lot to say, a lot you want to share to make yourself memorable in writing. Tight and succinct is the way to make an impact. You'll see in some of the examples that we don't use complete sentences. We write in what we call resume speak. It's, um, it's a traditional way of phrasing content that works really well on resumes. And content needs to be engaging because it is crucial that the person reviewing your resume find it compelling and interesting at a glance. Today, we're going to talk about the top 10 tips, great resumes for great positions. And we have a handout afterwards you'll be able to um, get get a copy of the handout of the top 10 top tips. So um, I know you're probably going to be taking notes, but getting a handout is, is also a great resource. We've created our own checklist for the great resumes based on best practices. Essential details we know are critical for a resume to be strong and successful. The top third of the first page, location, 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 kind of like real estate, right? Um, the top one of your resume should include the tightest summation you offer and why employers should care. We often do talk about the real estate on a resume page. The top third of the page should entice the reader to want to know more. We recommend that you summarize in bullet points your key skills, strengths, and accomplishments. Specifically, highlight and spotlight who you are as a candidate and what you have to offer. So here's an example of a sales resume. 
this resume demonstrates what to do to get the attention of the reader. Um, I, where it says sales management in the top green bar, that's where you're going to put the exact title of the position. Today, it takes the place of the job objective, which is about you and what you want. Your resume is a marketing brochure. It's really about the they need. And you and the reader want the same thing, a great candidate in the position that you're going to put at the top of the page. Um, so you'll use the top one third of the page to spotlight the results and accomplishments that you're most proud of. Make it easy to read at a glance. Um, you can see there are no paragraphs here. It's all bullet points. What's in a name? I see so many resumes with a huge name at the top, but your name should not be the biggest thing on the page. Really, I used to be an HR director, and sometimes I say to clients, nobody cares who you are and to know what you can do for them. Then they want to know who you are and how they can get in touch. So the employer is more interested in knowing what you can do for them, and then they'll want to know more specifically about you and make a call for an interview. Secondly, we don't recommend resumes, photos on resumes. In other countries, yes, it's standard, but here it's really a bad idea. As an HR person, I can tell you that you're setting up the employer for a discrimination case. They might say, you didn't call me for an interview because, you know, because of whatever, you know, race, nationality, gender, any of the protected classes. So you definitely don't, if I got a resume with a picture on it, I would throw it out. Um, you also don't want to put street address. I would include st city, state, and zip code um, because sometimes recruiters are looking for people in certain locations, but street address is too much information. Also include your LinkedIn URL and any links to sites or portfolios where your work is featured. Your target position. You want to change the target position to the exact words of the job title you're interested in. And this really ought to be the biggest thing, the first thing you see on the page. It allows the hiring manager to already imagine you as a successful candidate in that position, and it encourages him or her to read on. The applicant tracking system usually looks for words, for keywords that are in the job title. So by having the job title there, you got that nailed. It's really more important than your name. It points to where you're going, what's next for you and shows your readiness and confidence to move into that position. That's why we say future before past. We want to set focus on where you're heading and what you're promising in the top third of your resume, the most valuable real estate on the page. The rest is supporting evidence of all you've done to get to this point. So why you? What is your superpower? What is your secret sauce? That's your professional branding. It comes right under your target position, which is the exact job title. It's a snapshot of you in words or short phrases that describe your unique value, what makes you stand out, and the benefits you bring. This can include key accomplishments to highlight how you can help a company succeed. Of course, the goal is to be memorable. What would leave the best first impression? What about identifying attributes important to your profession and narrowing it down to three words or phrases that really summarize what you bring to the party. Here are a few examples. Um, so here you see the exact job title, sales director, senior director, and then account planning director. And under that, you see the professional branding statement. These branding statements all tell you what sets each candidate apart. But more important, trigger a sense of excitement and positive anticipation of what's to come when you read further. You're wetting the reader's appetite setting the stage for them to be impressed and interested in you at the very first glance. Importance of context. Context in terms of where you worked and how you present your accomplishments is crucial. We always include a brief description of each company you worked for to know, to provide context for your bullet point accomplishment statements. I mean, if as an HR person, if I'm seeing that you worked for a company and I don't know anything about that company, you're making me work too hard to look up the company to find out who they are and what they do. Instead, you need to put, go to the company's about page, the, sec the section on the website, take one or two lines of the description and it's right underneath the company name on your resume. This lets the hiring manager know also what industries you worked in. 
being a, a manager in tech may be very different from being a manager in the hospitality industry. Being a director for an international company is something very different from being the director for a startup. Results first. The way you format your accomplishments is really important. You can see the wrong way is putting the action steps first and then having the accomplishment last, saving the company 500,000. The right way to do it, you figure they're just going to glance at your resume. You want whatever's most important to stand out. Generated 500K in annual savings. If that's the most important part of that bullet point, put it first and put in bold. That's, that's where you'll get their attention. You're leading with the result rather than the action. Kiss paragraphs goodbye. Get rid of big blocks of text because there's a good chance that your resume will not be read. You don't want your eyes to glaze over. Summarize with bullet points. And yes, this also includes the top critical one third of your, the first page of your resume. I'm sure you've all heard about keywords. So what keywords are vital to your industry and to the positions you're targeting? You want to scrutinize job postings of the positions you want to discover what words are repeatedly mentioned. You can also go to a few sites, but ONET Online is another great site. It's a, it's a Department of Labor website it describes just about every position. Here are some other ways to do that. Word cloud, a word cloud is a, is a web application that visualizes word frequency of the pasted text. So you could copy and paste me into a, the box in a word cloud and then press visualize and the biggest words are the keywords that show up most often. That's another way to do it. Um, another way to find keywords, Wordle is a word cloud site. Tagcrowd.net is a word cloud site. Suval.com is another a free tool where you can type in a keyword and get a ton of keyword suggestions from multiple sites. Remember to use keywords in the crucial time one third section and then weave them throughout the body of the resume. Applicant tracking systems today are sophisticated and they can detect and disregard keywords if you just put them in a list. So it's best to integrate them into the resume. You can also have a list, but you definitely want to include them in your content. Um, standard fonts that are common to all computers are really important, especially now that things are increasingly being viewed on tablets and phones. There are only about 10 or 15 standard fonts that are university, universally readable, and I recommend choosing one of these and only one. You don't want your resume to be in a font that the applicant tracking system can't read. That, that, and, you know, also in terms of size, we say have the content in your resume be between 10 and 12 pitch. Don't go any smaller than 10. And if you go larger than 12, you might as well be writing in crayon. It's pretty big. Um, more details. Let's talk about dates. Don't go back before the year 2005. That's not to say don't include your valuable experience that took place earlier, but just be sure that your experience is relevant to the jobs you're seeking. And if you include it in its own section called earlier career or additional experience, if it's in a section, you can leave the dates off. You get so many questions from people who want to know what to do with you know, with older experience. Um, most business communication, a lot of it anyway now, takes place on mobile devices. This means making sure your resume is mobile friendly. Small cell phone screens make it impossible to view an entire resume at a glance. So you wanna make sure that the first impression communicates the most essential information. Again, that's the top third of your resume that's on a glance on most mobile devices. Think of it as another version of your elevator pitch, because if they like what they'll see, they'll scroll down. Um, focus on the heart of your resume, the top one third of page one. This is the deal breaker. You will either grab their attention or lose it. If they never read beyond this section, they should get all the important information you want them to know about you. Focus on highlights and save the rest for the interview. Keep your resume tight, succinct, and engaging. For resume length, new graduates usually one page is good. For most professionals, two pages is perfect. I, I have so many people that think there's a myth that you have to keep your resume to one page, and that's not true. Recruiters expect you to have two pages. 
And for people at the executive level, it can be three pages or longer, maybe have an addendum of publications or patents. You just want to make sure it's long enough to get everything in there that you need to say. So to summarize, fill your resume with impact and results. It's not okay to list job tasks, and that's it. I tell people, if you only list job tasks, how do I know that you're doing a good job? I need to see results and impact statements, accomplishment statements. Spotlight your unique value. Tell selective and engaging stories and highlight your why, what, and how. And keep your resume tight, succinct, and engaging. Remember, you want an interview. Um, that, that's the end of my presentation portion. If you want to reach me, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them now, or you can shoot me an email. That was perfect. I feel like it just highlighted all the important content and you answered some of my questions too. I am one of those. I thought you still had to be on a one pager. So uh, that's, that's good to know. And I also liked the, the, you know, anything 2005 and earlier to put in one section. I think that, that, makes a lot of sense. I have a question because I feel like there are some of these attendees out here looking to make a career change. Um, maybe they're in tech right now and wanting to switch to another industry. How would you go about that? Because sometimes titles are a little different. You know, are there any suggestions when you're actually doing a career change? Um, when you, are you meaning like a person who was a special edu education teacher moving to a social media expert? Are you meaning a real career? Right, change? completely okay. new. Or, you know, we see it okay. a lot. Yeah, maybe they're in education and now they're going into pharmaceutical sales, you know, right. uh, a big change. Yes. I know I had a restaurant owner who closed his restaurant after 20, 25 years during COVID and now the finance manager for a nonprofit. Wow. So um, my recommendation is you can't write me without knowing what you're, po what you're getting. If okay. a person comes to me and says, you know, I, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I mean, it could be 60 years old. It could be 40. It could be a new college grad. The first step, so many people come to me and say, I need a new resume, but we can't write a resume till we know what you're doing, what you want to do. How can we fill yeah. it with keywords, scope, relevant accomplishments, context? So the first step is really the career exploration process. Remember, a resume is a marketing brochure. It's designed to position you as the best candidate for the roles you're going after. And in order to do that properly, we need to know what you're going after. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Um, we're getting a few other questions. Uh, we have one for specifying for a specific job. Do I change the resume each time, including name and also customize the content? That's a great question. Um, I would customize the job title each time because you want to use the exact words because that's what they're looking for. Um, and if you're going after a job that's similar to the jobs that your resume was written for, that's probably the only thing you really need to customize. Maybe the top third of the page, you could rearrange the bullet points if you think that's necessary. But if it's if you're going after the same kinds of jobs, your resume should really be in good shape. Okay, great. We just got another one. What do you think of using hyperlinks for awards, companies, and articles? You know, there's um, in the resume writing world, and I belong to career thought leaders and career industry authorities, there's feelings about hyperlinks. Um, I think it's a good idea, but I also think people don't want to click on something if they don't trust it. That's where the caveat is. You know, also, you know, I always thought, should you have a hyperlink at the top of your resume for your email address or your LinkedIn profile? Well, some people are saying probably not because nobody's going to click on it. Uh -huh. So, um, but I would definitely, you know, I would, I would include a hyperlink. It's up to the reader to decide what they want to do. Got it. Would you say sometimes that would be better in an, an addendum? Let's say if they, you mentioned if you had a publication, maybe you have that on an addendum with some hyperlinks there. Okay. You know, it depends on how many publications you might have. If you really um, just have a few, you could probably fit it into the, the two pages of your resume. I would save an addendum for like a scientist or, you know, an engineer with patents that has a whole page full of articles and publications. Sure. That would be the third page. Sure. Great. Okay. A few more coming in. This is great. Uh, what is the best way to indicate a willingness to move even out of state? Yeah, um, this brings up the whole question of cover letters. 
Should you write a cover letter? And should you include your willingness to move in the cover letter? Um, you know, maybe if, if you're really willing to move and go out of state, I might put it at the top of your resume with your contact information. Um, you know, willing to relocate would be a good thing to let them know right off the bat. Um, the other thing I want to say is 53% of the time, the reader the readers need to see a cover letter. And 47% and of the time, they don't care. But it's sort of risky from that with those statistics to not write one. A cover looks forward to what you'll do and how you'll contribute to the organization. And a resume looks back at what you've accomplished. So it's like two sides of the same coin. And it's another opportunity to market yourself. Love that. Uh, another good question just came in. Is applying for jobs through LinkedIn productive or do companies not take those applicants as seriously? Um, the main reason to apply for a job through LinkedIn, in my opinion, is that you've been, you've done your due diligence, you've done your homework, and you've gotten recommendations. If you apply through LinkedIn, all of your recommendations will go along with your application. And that's, you know, somebody else, you know, saying a good word for you, which is really important. Um, otherwise, I would be more likely to go on the company's website and apply there. On that note, is it too much if you apply multiple locations through LinkedIn on their website? You know, if you have a personal email, is that, does that look too intense, <laughs> too yeah. eager? I mean, your your objective is to is to get noticed, right? Okay. And so, in order to get noticed, what I would do is I might I would apply, then I would do a search on LinkedIn for the name of the company and maybe the word recruiter. I would see if I could find someone there that I could reach out to with an email. I mean, think of it: a lot of companies offer an employee referral bonus if they if somebody in the company mm. refers an employee to them who ends up like working for six months or whatever their criteria is, they could get a couple thousand dollars. So for, for you to reach out on LinkedIn, you know, to somebody either in the department or someone who's there and try and establish a relationship and maybe have them hand in your information. Um, you know, I also heard that some recruiters think if you don't connect with them on LinkedIn after applying, you're not really interested in the job. I always thought it's sort of presumptuous, you know, to ask to connect with a recruiter if you don't know them. So it's really going to be your own comfort level. But you definitely need to reach out after applying to somebody at the company, even if it's somebody who is a recruiter. That's really smart. Uh, another one just came in. For C-level searches, should we assume that a, an executive recruiter will spend a, longer on the resume? Um, how are you reaching the recruiters is my question. Are you getting introduced to them by someone? I have something called a resume distribution service. It's a database of 42,000 recruiters around the country. And I can tell you, we did a resume last, which re needs looks like it comes from your personal email. And it oh. goes um, from your email to these recruiters. We did it for an HR person. She it went out to 1,900 people because we have to narrow it down by, you know, by industry and position. And of the 1,900, she immediately got contacted by 40 recruiters. So they did spend more time on her resume. And then of the 40, you know, it's kind of like serendipity. They really have to be working on a special, you know, assignment and job in order to have a position for you. But of the 40, five had job openings. And of the five, she went right into interviews and she did get a great job. So, you know, I think recruiters will spend time because that's part of their bread and butter. Hmm. That's great. Uh, you were speaking of uh, the database that you have and you're able to reach 4,200. So it made me think of something <laughs> of topic yeah. right now. I think you know my question. Um, chat GBT. Uh, everyone, it's a hot topic. And quite honestly, I'm not even well advanced on it at all. But I know chat GBT is a hot topic. And there's probably a college student right now thinking, huh, maybe I have chat GBT do my resume for me. Or, uh, you know, someone in tech thinking that too. I'm just curious, have you seen any trends with that in the resume world? It's a really hot topic among resume writers. I mean, I can tell you that I put my name, I said, tell me about Wilma Naxon into the chat GPT just to see what it would say. Because, you know, it does make mistakes. It doesn't really go past the year 2021. And for me, wow. it had me listed as a person in a completely different profession with a lot of different things that were totally irrelevant. Wow. So, um, I mean, you might, you know, you might want to take 
want to copy and paste the accomplishments or some of the criteria in a job posting and then put those into chat GPT and say, you know, write me bullet points for my resume and see hmm. what it does. I mean, you yeah. can try that. It's worth it, you know, but still, you know, the tools are intelligent, but they're not foolproof. You'll want to make sure you actually have the experience that the artificial intelligence is citing and you want to double check for, for accuracy, spelling, grammar, punctuation. You just have to, you know, have to go through and edit and proofread and maybe, you know, I still think it takes human eyes to format it properly. Agreed. Have you ever used Grammarly? I'm curious if you're familiar with it for resume I, writing. I do use Grammarly, you know, but for resume writing, um, in each of the resumes, the bullet points, we write the bullet points as though it's a sentence starting with the word I. And, and then, of course, we use action verbs. I facilitated, I orchestrated, I championed. And then we leave the word I off and we just start with that action verb. And I think Grammarly might go through the resume and might try and add more of the words that resume writers edit out. But other than that, I think Gram Grammarly is great. That's great. That was actually a really good tip too. Thank you. Well, we are coming up on the 30 minute mark and we promised everyone this would be a short and sweet uh, lunch and learn. So uh, before we wrap up, I just wanted to see if there's any other questions for Wilma. Uh, we're getting some thank yous. So thank you, Wilma. And I will second that. This was very helpful. And um, I'm so excited that you're able to share this content with so many of our clients, friends, and family, and everyone who has tuned in. I don't know if you heard, we are recording this. We will send this to uh, everyone who attended and RSVP'd. And then feel free, share this with colleagues, with friends, anyone you think might be looking. And we are going to send out Wilma's contact information. Goodness, she has so many great tips and advice. And she also is a career counselor too. So feel free to reach out. Um, again, we are here to help serve the Chicago community. So if there's anything else we could present on and help you all with, let us know. Um, and Wilma, anything you would like to share in your closing thoughts? I just, there's a great job out there for everyone. Don't spend your time, like 80% of your time should be creating relationships and networking with people. 20% of your time is applying online. It's, um, it's really the way most people get their jobs. And you know, your resume is important, job search collateral, because people at work will pass it around. So um, there's a great job out there for everyone. Go out and get it. Yay. That's w well said. Wonderful. Well, thank you all. Enjoy your Wednesday. And we are here if you need anything at all. Have a good day. Thank you, Wilma. Okay.